Hey everybody, you're in my kitchen right now. I'm going to show you some cuttings I took of a fruit called Juneberry or Amelanchier. Uh, this particular variety is called Arborea, Amelanchier Arborea, I think is the way you say it. Um, and this fruit's really interesting because um, it tastes kind of like blueberries if you've never had it before. Um, and I, I recently got a chance to go down to uh, something called the Costa Rican Fruit Festival and talk to uh, what I believe is, or who I believe is probably the most knowledgeable fruit expert in the world. And he's only a little bit older than me. And he's traveled literally almost, you know, every continent, uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of countries all over the world. Just, he's eccentric. He finds the best fruit. And um, I asked him uh, what one of his favorites is uh, after trying, you know, stuff from the rainforest, from mountains, all over the place. And he said the June berry, the service berry, um, has one of the best flavors for him. Um, and I agree. It's a really great berry. I don't know if I would say it's my absolute favorite fruit, but I mean, if... A world-renowned expert on fruit says this is something that um, uh, you should try and that he loves. You know, you should probably try it. And it's native too, so um, and it's great for for wildlife. But you know, it's also really good to eat too. So let's see what we have here. These are cuttings I took from a, a local park, and I've gone before to take cuttings, both root cuttings and like uh, hardwood cuttings like this. And they've never taken, but you know, I'm, I was still a beginner back then, and I'm getting a little bit better at propagation now. So we're going to try to uh, basically take these cuttings. I put them in rooting powder, rooting hormone, and we're going to put these in a, a pot of uh, soil mix. And uh, I'll show you how we're going to try to see if they can get, I can get them to the root. Here's my rooting medium. Um, I don't know if this necessarily is ideal. Some people will use sand. Some people use just perlite. This is basically just a really light potting mix that I made up. Um, it's got uh, vermiculite. A little bit of peat moss, uh, quite a bit more coconut core, which is an alternative to peat moss um, that I actually really like. It's cheap. There was a brick of it for three bucks, and it was a giant bucket full of, uh, it creates a giant bucket full of uh, what's essentially like peat moss, but it's more renewable. And I also put perlite, um, a little bit of worm castings in. Usually it's not recommended to add a lot of amendments to uh, rooting mixes. You want it to be fairly sterile, but this is, I don't really have anything else right now. So we're going to try it in the standard potting mix that I made. Um, what I do is just go through here, um, and this is upside down right now, but uh, I'm just going to create a little indentation because if you poke it straight in with the rooting hormone on it, sometimes the rooting hormone will rub off um, as you're pressing it down. So I like to just kind of create a hole for it to go in. Um, and I'm just going to do that until they're all done. And we'll check back in a second. Okay, they're all in right now, um, and that one in the center is a little weird. Uh, I'm not sure if that one's going to take, but I figured since these were just, I didn't actually take cuttings from the plant. They, it was just recently pruned, and there were cuttings all over the ground, so I just easily just picked up the plant. I'm going to go back and do another video on maybe taking some root cuttings from this plant, and uh, maybe even additional um, hardwood cuttings as well. Um, so I placed them all in there. Spacing is not that important because when you remove them, you know, they're only going to have, um, you know, minimal roots um, on the attached to the cutting. So there's not really too much of a risk of them intertwining and, and creating problems. But, you know, you don't want them like right next to each other. So that's a pretty good spacing, I think. Um, and then the last part is placing something over the top to control the environment because the biggest failure point for uh, propagating cuttings is uh, moisture. It's, it's drying out um, and also sometimes too much moisture. And, you know, I've, I've heard people say that um, you need to worry less about above ground moisture and you, you should worry more about the moisture in the soil. You want to keep uh, the, the medium moist. And I'm not sure if that's true for hardwood cuttings. Uh, I'm still, you know, a beginner in all of this. But to me, it seems that um, there's no roots to absorb any water. So what's the point of watering this soil medium all the time? You want to make sure the above ground um, especially when there's leaves on them. Maybe I should have waited until these have leafed out, but when there's leaves in your cuttings, you don't want your leaves to dry up and your bark to dry up and your above ground parts to dry up because, you know, if they do, they're not going to put any roots on. So you want to cover this up with some plastic, spray it down every once in a while. You probably want to let it breathe too because you kind of have to go by feel because if you, if you leave a plastic lid on the top or a plastic bag on the top, um, it's eventually going to rot. You know, it's going to get moldy. So you don't want that. You want to have just enough humidity, not too much. So let's see if I can put a plastic uh, cover on top of this. 
There, doesn't that look pretty? Um, I just covered it up with a shopping bag. It's probably not ideal. I might get some comments saying, you know, you're not supposed to use that kind of bag. Um, also, I put something, it was basically just like a long stick um, to keep the bag propped up so it's not, you know, hanging on the cuttings and moving them around. It kind of just protects them like that. Um, and there's a little hole in the bag, which is probably a good thing. You don't want it to be so airtight that there's no air circulation and then bacteria and mold can, can set in. And you just want to make sure you keep this... Um, moist so I might just stick uh, my nozzle in there and just spray uh, in the hole every couple days uh, or probably more probably every day maybe multiple times a day really because I'm in the ideal setting would be a misting system that missed this every you know half hour or something um, but again there's no leaves on these so it's not transpiring a lot of water so we'll see this might not work at all this might be a failure I'm gonna try to do a, a video update so you know uh, if I succeeded or failed so subscribe to stay tuned thanks guys